Welcome to Philosophy in BIM today. In this video, I'm going to show you to do a workaround on how to get the level marker to show two values for both project levels in the survey point <coughs> level. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so I come across with this article on Auditors Community Forum. That actually was one of the issues that I come across a few times in the project. And the issue is we want to show the uh, project base point as well as the survey point on the level markers on the project. Uh, this is one of the limitations that hasn't been possible in Revit yet because you can only choose to show the project base point in your level datum or you can choose to do the survey base base point which is accuracy level elevations uh, in your level markers uh, you can't do both unfortunately at this point so this is where this audit desk committee uh, threat, threat talks about because it basically wants to be a future rapid improvement for the project and like I said un up until now is still been, never been possible yet so this is kind of why i want to use this video to talk about some of the workaround process that you can do and apply to your project all right okay let's go ahead and get started uh in uh, my sample file here so this is just a sample file that i put together i currently have a level um like level one two and roof uh, right basically let's look at the level one here first of all the level one here if we go to the properties this level is actually using the project base point as a way to uh, show up and the level markers so uh, like i said you can only choose project base point or survey point uh, you can't do both okay so what we need to do is to actually edit the level marker family in order to kind of trick Revit to do what we need so i'm going to go ahead and cancel this first thing i'm going to have to do is to look for that level head family so i'm going to go to the project browser here and i'm under the families category i'm going to look for the annotation symbols under the annotation symbols you can find now where the uh grid head not grid head actually uh not grid head but it's actually going to be the level head circle which is the level marker family and i'm going to go ahead and right click and edit the family so it will open the family in the family editor so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to go to the visibility graphics uh, vg and what i want to do is to turn on the reference plane checkbox here so that i can just to turn on the reference plane here just to kind of get an idea where everything's are uh, because what we need to do is to manipulate the label next all right so a uh, couple of things here uh, i have a two labels currently so the one i have to make some edits is the this label called elevation so select the label here and go to the top and do the edit label so what happens is i'm going to leave this current parameter elevation the way it is and this is actually the one that representing the project level elevations what i need to do is i actually need to trick revit and to do that i need to actually add a calculate the parameter to this label which is this icon here All right i'm going to do that do that and under the calculated value i'm going to go ahead and type this thing here call c level elevation and knowing that this is not going to be a real run this is the one that we just trying to trick rather to do it uh, but i'm going to name it this way anyways all right and under the discipline i can keep the common the way it is the type instead of number is actually going to be distant be, uh, be careful so there is a distant and there's a link parameter uh, we're going to use this distant parameter as a type, not length. So be careful of that. All right. Then the next one is going to be under the formatter. 
So what I need to do is I need to click on these three dots ellipse icon. I have to use the project level elevations as part of the formula. And what I need to do is I need to hit the plus sign here. Okay, so let's just say I've got the information from my civil engineer or my surveyor and know that my sea level elevation is going to be um, 123 feet and uh, 6 inch. Okay, uh, and that will be equivalent to my project level at 00. zero. So in that case, I need to put this value here. I'm going to put 123.5 and I'm going to put feet there. This is the number that I am given by, again, by the civil engineers or the surveyor that will represent the real world sea level elevation. Okay, so after that, under the formula, I can hit OK. So I'm going to hit apply and see what it looks like. Okay, as you can see here, it's going to look something like this. All right, so um, what I actually need to do further to enhance the graphic representation is that I can actually go to the prefix and add the open parenthesis and the plus sign. And then under the suffix, I would put the close in parenthesis there and hit apply. And you'll see that the graphics is going to update it here to to be more legible, which is to more closer to the sample image that we saw in the forum. All right, so what I can also do next is to go under the prefix. I can add the space in between this and the sample value. I hit apply again. You see that now it's going to space out a little bit nicer. I can also go to the space column here to increase the spacing. So that would be uh, I will have more spacing in between the project base level, project uh, project level, and the C level. So I'm just gonna add like three spaces, and hit apply again. You see that now it's gonna space out a little bit nicer. Okay, and then the sample value. The sample value again is going to be the one which is doesn't really matter. Uh, but what I want to do is I just want to have some nicer number instead of the word. So what I can do is I just going to put like 123.5 feet as a sample value. Again, it doesn't really matter what sample value I put. I just going to put some number instead of text and then I'm going to hit apply. So you see that right now it's going to clean up the, um, the sample label graphics for me. We're not quite done yet. There's one more thing. What happens is the usually the sea level elevations, uh, f especially in US, uh, architectural drawings, we actually use the feet and inch, um, a fractional feet and inch for our documentation. However, for engineering drawings, especially for simple drawings, we are using decimal feet. So in this case, I need to match the dash graphic uh, using the decimal feet here. So what I need to do is I need to see like this label here, the second part of the label. I need to go to this little guy here called edit parameters unit format. And I basically need to uncheck it because I'm not using the project setting, which is the fractional feet and inch. Uh, instead, I'm going to use the decimal feet. So in this case, I'm going to keep the feet here and I'm going to choose the decimal place to two decimal places. And then I'm going to use the unit label feet here and hit OK. And that's it. If I hit OK right now, nothing's going to change because the changes is going to apply to the project, not in the family. All right. So now I have everything I need that complete the modification. I'm going to go ahead and load this back to the project. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and accept the changes of writing the existing version. And hit cancel here. And you'll see that the changes being updated here on all my level datum, floor level one, two, and roof. And you, as you can see here, uh, my level one being a zero, zero project level 
it's going to have that sort of uh, additional graphic for my sea level, sea level elevations or survey point elevations to equivalent to 123 and 5 feet. Yeah, again, you can see that this is actually showing the decimal feet instead of the fractional feet in inch. Uh, so for level 2, again, it's the same thing. It knows level 2 is 15 feet above level 1 so that the my, my fake C level elevation is also going to be smart enough to do the math to kind of calculate that with that uh, additional 123 feet and 5 inch plus 15 uh, to, to generate that number. So the nice thing about this kind of workaround is that every time I change my floor to floor height, in this case, if I ever change my level to, let's just say it's not instead of 15, let's just say it's going to be 16 feet 9 inch, for example, for whatever reason, my fake C level elevation is going to update it by itself. So it is actually better this way, and because it's going to show up everywhere where your um, elevation or section drawing is, so you don't have to use any uh, text to try to mimic this uh, graphic representation. So there's one thing you have to remember. If for whatever reason your project down the road that your sea uh, level elevations provided by engineers is changing over time, because of whatever reason, you must go back to this level head family and you need to go back to this label and make sure that this second part of the label with the calculated value is updated. So this is the number. Like I said, this is a number that we actually try to trick Revit to do what we want. And if this number change over time, you must come back to here and make edit. So like I said, if you're the person who actually did the changes, you should know how to go back and make updates according to the changes for your project. So this is very important. Otherwise, all your information for your survey point, sea level elevation is going to be incorrect down the road. All right. That is all I have today. I hope you're going to find this trick um, useful. If you ever need to use this information for your drawing representation, for, for your drawing representation, because uh, from time to time, we are asked to provide two type of information on our project uh, required by the city, required by different uh, regional plan checker or kind of a municipal district. So sometimes this is a necessary things that we have to trick rapid to do what we need. Okay, uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up or uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to share more of the tips and tricks uh, for Revit in, the, in my next video very, very soon. All right, and I uh, hope you like it again. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank you.